that's a very big fluke. Beautiful. There's just nowhere like Nantucket Shoals for fluke fishing. It is so much fun. And, 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 and fluke fishing is a very social kind of fishing, too. Especially when you tangle up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? We don't have to be nice to each other. You know, when you tangle up, it brings two people even closer together. Nantucket Shoals are a long run from the south side of Cape Cod. Running the same distance to a different bearing on the compass would put an angler in range of bluefin tuna. Yet every year, hundreds of fishermen visit the Cape from as far away as southern New Jersey to make this run, not for tuna, but for a shot at catching their biggest ever fluke. That's exactly what Chris Megan, Anthony DeCicci, and I are hoping for as we load Chris's 32-foot regulator in the blue hour of a beautiful mid-June morning. On this trip, we're leaving the bait at the dock and targeting Nantucket's fluke with jigs tipped with scented artificials. Got the gulp on there. That should give me plenty of scent. I'm not gonna bother tipping it with any bait. Basically what this is gonna do along the bottom is I'm gonna keep it in constant motion. It's gonna hit bottom, gonna lift and drop. Just not big sweeps like you would jigging a diamond jig for bluefish, just smaller little taps. It's gonna bounce its way along, the tail's gonna kick, and up top, most of the bites today, I'd, I'd guess, are gonna be on this, uh, on the teaser up top. That, that does the same thing. But for whatever reason, the fluke, it's like the jig calls them in, and then the teaser seals the deal. No lights in. What's our uh, what's our speed over ground? One seven. It's good. Yeah, we're moving good. Yeah, that moving water is so important. Not only, I mean, the fluke are going to feed more when the water's moving, and you're covering more ground too. Because the, it's funny. You will go through a, a patch where you, you know you'll drift a hundred yards. You won't do anything. Then you'll go through a, a fifty foot stretch where the fluke it, it must look like a like a roof, like a tile floor down there. It's a good fish. Should you like it? It's a good fish. We gotta get something in the box, boys. If it's the right kind, it's a nice one. Oh, good fluke, good fluke. Oh, yes. Nice fish. All right. That's a good one. That's what we That's came for, That's a boys. real good one. Wow. So, we got the Pen Fathom. Uh, on the battalion's low pitch rod. Very fun fight. Absolutely love the feel to it. And I, I'm fishing a backwater bait ball jig with a glow head and a little pink and white uh, skirt on it. So this is what you come to the shoals for, these nice fluke. Nantucket shoals are a vast area of wildly fluctuating depths and strong currents. Their position, extending off the southeast corner of Nantucket, puts them at the confluence of the cold water from the backside of Cape Cod and the warm water from south of Martha's Vineyard. This makes them a bait fish factory, the nutrient-rich waters attracting species like sand eels, mackerel, and squid, with those species attracting predators like the summer flounder. Well, what these shows are also known for is just giant fluke. And there's just so much water to cover. And, un and unfortunately, a lot of times, the captains end up pretty much within the same area. And one of the things that all captains are looking for out here is that 80, 90 feet of water with the right bottom. Oh, boy. Jimmy, you saw that. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Cheech. Net? Yeah. I think he's going to be. <laughs> Oh, nice fish, Jimmy. Nice, man. Nice fish, dude. That's a beautiful fluke. It's a little bit smaller than Cheech. It's not quite as big, but man, on this light gear, they are so much fun. And what I like about having kind of a softer rod, too, is you're, you're less likely to pull the hook out of the fish, too. So you do want a rod that's a little bit softer. You saw I took my time with that fish, got him up there, and this is another one that is just one of those perfect sizes to keep, and he hit that teaser, it's, all that was on there was just a uh, Berkeley gulp on a 5.0 Gamakatsu bait holder hook. Man, I'm gonna get back down there because we've definitely gone through a patch of uh, some better fish. <laughs> close it up, close it up. <laughs> you see the one jump? That thing almost came out of the box.
So this gulf is still in good shape. It's still good enough to fish, but I'm actually going to switch it up. And Chris, this is something that they, they say you can do with these is, you see we've got basically, I've got one of my wife's leftover uh, Tupperwares right there and you can put the bait back in there and it'll reabsorb the scent. So I've been fishing this one all day, all morning so far. Not that we've been here for that long, but I'll put this back in there. It'll reabsorb all that, that gulp scent, which is that, that kind of oily liquid you see around in there. So I'm just taking a fresh one out of there. Same bait, this is the swimming mullet. And what's nice about these is for the teaser hooks, we've got the two little barbs right there. That'll keep the bait in place while I'm jigging it, help it resist uh, sliding down the hook. Jimmy, saw that. Oh, man, these rods are fun, though. Man, I just love how the little bait casters just fit right in the palm of your hand, man. It's basically like largemouth bass gear. He, uh, nah, don't bother. Okay, Jimmy. You on? Yes. By mid-morning, we have several beautiful keepers in the box. Anywhere else, and we'd be in the midst of a banner day of fluke fishing. Ah, little fella. However, we've yet to see a fish that would justify our four-hour round trip to Nantucket Shoals. Rodney Rodhole and do that. Cheech, you're all set with this, right? Your fork over, Chris. Woohoo! Shibuya. Thank Rodney Rodhole are coming through. Taking the fluke for a walk. See there? Oh yeah, she's there all right. Going for my PB on Rodney the Rodhole. For a delicate situation like this, there's no one you want on the net more than me. <laughs> Cheech swats away PBs like flies with nets. That's a big fluke. Slowly, slowly. Guys, what happened there was I was getting ready to rig up another rod there because we're covering some water. And one of the things you want to do is old Rodney Rodhole answers the bell many, many times. Right Chris, now. look at the size of the cheeks on that one. I mean, that's, that's the part of the, the fluke that I like best. He, and it's almost as if he knew he's going to lose his cheeks later today. No, man, I've got that one right now. You went to it? I went to the real light one. Well, you mean, this is it right here, isn't it? That's the one I was just fishing. No, this, so that's a 350, this is the 250, and then I've got the 100 right here. So this is the, the super, super light. Uh, I'm on, Jimmy. You're, we're, we're linked up? No, we're not. Yes, we are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, those guys are out of the game. Meads, he's still in. No, no, don't do that. Yeah, you do, that's what you do. That's not what you do. You're making it work. You're just cinching it in. You, you reeled my line into your reel. What? So this is why I love being on my side. I may not catch as many fish. Oh, boy. But I'm not going to get into what I saw a cluster. Oh, boy. See right now? Martin Jeff over there getting into it pretty good. That's why, that's why, you, te that's how, that's why you tell me what time you're picking me up in the morning. Cheech, what, what I like to do is, is just, oh, Jimmy, you tight? No, I'm, I'm still dealing with this. <laughs> Figure it out. Right. Get out of here! How what, you what are you doing? What are you doing? What, what are you doing? We're coming through the zone. <laughs> I'm not the one who reeled his line into the reel, rendering it un unusable. Oh boy, slow pitch, Jimmy is going to be right in front. Of him. He's going to be coming down on me. So Jimmy <laughs> just shut down the port side, and now he's over to the starboard. I <laughs> just shut it down. He's there. I like Jimmy culling out some of the smaller fish. I did, I did just get this one out of the way. Oh, just keep that tight, keep that tight. I'm, slow, I'm slow, just slow, trying slow, to reel slow. down on him. I'm just oh, trying to man. reel down on him. I can't get him oh, off wait. the bottom. This is what I cleared out for you. Thank you. <laughs> J 
So guys, when I'm fighting this fish, I'm just trying to get them off the bottom right now. And the first thing I want to do, I'm not going to do a lot of pumping. I'm really just going to keep a steady reel on this fish. <laughs> that is a gorgeous fish. That's an extra large fluke. Use this scale right now. Cheat, cheat, cheat for some reason has it in kilograms, so we'll have to do the conversion back of the dock. I'm thinking seven or eight pounds. Maybe That's a little fine. bit more. I think you might be a little bit more than that, Chris. Let's see. You got it? Uh, I got to take this this yeah. out. Well, you can add the extra eight ounces. Well, well, you know what the weight is, right? So we can just take that right out. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need to add that to our conversion later. <laughs> so it is, looks like it's about four and a quarter kilograms. Chris, it's probably close to a nine pound fluke. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful fluke, man. I just had a bite right there. there. I'm on again. Cheat, see if you can walk him over to the port side. I think I'm going to need that net. Feels good, yeah. Yeah, I need that net. Towards me, there you go. Nice, Cheech, that's a nice fish. You know, this is a little bit below average for a fluke out here. That's a real big one. That's, that might be 10, man. Look at that, barely in. Put a weight on it. 10-2, 10-5, 10-2, I'm gonna go with 10-2. Yeah, that's a 10 pound fluke right there. It's become common practice for captains and fishermen to release large fluke to help preserve the trophy fishery on Nantucket Shoals. After taking a look at his first 10 pound plus summer flounder, Anthony decides to do the same. While I'm happy for him, I have to admit, Cheech's doormat fluke wasn't the only green eyed monster in our mist. With my biggest fish of the day at only five pounds, I can't help but be a bit envious of Chris and Cheech and their new personal bests. Shortly after Cheech's big catch, the tide slacks out and the fishing dies off. We break for lunch and wait for the water to start moving again. When it does, Chris positions the regulator back over the area where we began the morning, and I start working my jig with a little extra pizzazz, hoping for a big bite before it's time to go home. Here we go. Jimmy, ho oh, ho. Oh. That's a fish, Jimmy got one. I hate those head shakes, I hate them. I mean, I love them, but I hate them. Jimmy, that seems like it's staying right on the bottom, man. Is that a halibut? Let's just, let's, let's. I'd turn the handle a little bit more. Huh? Uh, dude, I, I'm babying him. brings the line up. All right, he's, he's close. I got leader here. Nice, Jimbo. Whoa. Oh, man. Jimmy. Oh, yeah, buddy. buddy. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for the net, man. No problem. Several years ago, we received a strongly worded, handwritten letter scolding us for our liberal use of the word doormat. That designation, it said, 
was reserved for fluke larger than 10 pounds. I don't agree. When it comes to big fish nicknames like cow striper, gator bluefish, or doormat fluke, I think it's meant to refer to more of a look than to the fish's exact size. So I'm going to go ahead and call this fluke a doormat, no matter what the scale says. If you don't like it, I'll be awaiting your letter. 915? 915 and a broken scale? We're gonna go ahead and keep this fish. It's late in the day. We've let a lot of fish go, and uh, we're gonna keep this one. So. Yeah, we, we've talked about how these fish are, how predatory they are, and, and kind of the dental equipment they're packing. I mean, that gives you a pretty good example. I mean, that's that's my jig. That jig didn't look like that until uh, after that fish, all scraped up from those big teeth. And just, uh, they're such awesome fish. I did check my leader. Like I, we said earlier, they're not gonna bite through your line like a bluefish will, but they'll still chafe it. And you wanna make sure that uh, everything's looking good. No chafes, no abrasions. So if you do hook a, hook a real big one, you wanna eliminate all the possibilities for losing it. With fish in the box and one big fish apiece, we'd entered the part of a fishing trip that I think of as bonus time. Nothing that happened from that point forward could change our perspective of the day. Or so I thought. I'm gonna clear these lines. Well, I'll leave, I'll leave two. Uh, all right, maybe I won't clear them. <laughs> He's a fish. Yeah? Checking away, Jimmy, down on the bottom, huh? The best thing you can do when fighting a big fluke is to maintain steady pressure, not pump the rod, and hope against hope that the hook hangs on. Don't horse the fish, but don't baby it either. The longer you fight a fluke, the more likely it is to get away. I'll grab the net, Jimmy. Tell me when you get close. Yeah, it's, it, we're drifting so fast, I'm worried to force them too much. All right, here we go. Just reel in the troughs. Oh! Did you ever move him off the bottom? Not by much, man. That was a big fish. That was a really big fish. I couldn't do much with him because it's... Oh! That was a big fish. That was a really big fish. Dude, you saw those head shakes. I mean, that was... As I handled the loss of that fish with grace and aplomb, I thought about how knowing that there's always a bigger fish is what draws us to places like Nantucket Shoals, even though there's plenty of fluke much closer to home. Two hours later, we returned to Falmouth Harbor with a cooler full of fluke, a couple new personal bests, and a one that got away story. What could be better than that? Well, actually catching the fish would have been better, but only by a little bit. One of the overlooked cuts of a fish that I've really started, uh, that I've really enjoyed over the last couple years has been the cheek section. So that area is basically the muscle that controls the jaw of the fish. And it's a really dense piece of meat. It actually has consistency closer to a scallop than it does, like, you know, the rest of the filet. And you obviously, you, know, you get two off each fish. You know, they're about that big, you know, if you have enough fish and they're big enough and it makes sense to cut them out, it is probably my favorite part of the fish to eat. It's true of fluke, sea bass, tatag, cod. Uh, if you get enough cod fish, that's another good one. So I'm gonna just show how I cut the cheeks out of the fish right here. So you start by feeling where, you know, kind of the gill plate, the bone of the gill plate meets up to the muscle. So there'll be a little soft edge right there. I'm gonna start by just placing the knife into that edge and I'm gonna work it around 
there. And I'm just gonna try to trace that little edge one way, then we'll go back the other way. Just kind of feeling for as deep as possible, running against the bone there. Oh, you can go all the way out around here. Now, Fluke's unique because normally you use the eye on like a tog or a sea bass as the gauge for where you should go, but both of the Fluke's eyes are on one side of it. So I'm gonna go right down through there, get around there, make sure I've got deep enough on it. You don't need to skin the cheek meat, actually. Once you get it to about that point, I missed a little meat there. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get get it going, but once you have that part mostly separated from the rest of the fluke, kind of work your fingers under there, peels right off, and that is going to be the tastiest piece of meat that comes out of this fluke, I guarantee it. When I'm carving out the cheeks, this is usually what I eat the same day I'm fishing. Spend a long day on the water, you don't really want to make an elaborate meal out of the fillets, so quick, easy, fried cheeks and fluke ribbons. We're gonna put them in some cornmeal, Deep fry them, that's gonna be a great, easy to make meal that I bet a lot of you guys have been throwing out when you're cleaning your fluke. First things first though, just gonna let them soak in buttermilk just for a couple minutes before I drop them in the cornmeal. That's gonna let them uh, cornmeal a little something to stick to. Beautiful. Look at the cheeks. Never overcrowd, never overcrowd.